The piece I'm reading tonight comes at the end of the first four sections of my memoir and right before the final section, which is called Woodstock. It takes place at the Ohio Mountain family, which was a commune located just outside the village of Woodstock, that is the actual place. Clark and Ava are the group's leaders. I hope you enjoy it. It's called Pow Wow. <clears throat> Clark works hard at seeming mystical. To further his allure, he wears a robe and sandals, stays aloof from the daily goings on, and speaks infrequently. Ava, his co-wife, his wife and co-leader is his opposite. She's organized, approachable, and always involved in everything. When Clark deigns to speak, I expect to hear cosmic pronouncements, but invariably what's on his mind is something like, we're low on raisins. So tonight at dinner, when I see him dressed in jeans, a denim shirt, and a tie-down bandana on his head, I sense something's up. After Ava leads us in grace, Clark speaks. We're calling a powwow tonight at the fire pit. It's important. Head down there after dinner. Please don't ask us about it now, says Ava. We want, ev want to tell everybody at the same time. Carmen and I head into the woods with another couple, River and Laney. It's my first group meeting, so I ask what they're like. Clark and Ava only call them when they have to, Laney says. But once it gets rolling, it's like a Quaker meeting. People can bring up pretty much anything. Arms around each other, River and Laney match strides as they stroll down the path. After dropping out of Penn State together, they came here seeking a new kind of life. Carmen and I are like halfway a couple. Whenever I try to find out more about her past, her fantastic smile evaporates and she admonishes me. All we have is now. Let's not waste time talking about what was. That doesn't work for me. Everyone is sitting in a circle. Ava starts chanting, Om Shanti, Shanti Om, and we all join hands. Joints are passed around and the, vibe get, the vibes get soft and easy. Holding a Buddha statuette, she says, Buddha is here to help us stay centered and to remind us that being open works best. Whoever's holding Buddha gets to speak. We like to pass it from woman to man and back. Keeps us united. Clark adds, couple of crew chiefs got stuff to discuss. Ava and me are up last. Manny, the head of the Fixer Upper crew, stands. He wears his hair in a short afro and sports a Fu Manchu mustache. I've worked with him on a number of projects and respect his know-how and work ethic. Hailing from the Bronx, Manny's earned his muscular arms and his oversized hands working in the building trades. He's been at the OM since the spring. The pink outhouse is sinking. He announces, sinking fast. Better hope you're not the one who takes the ride on that elevator to the basement. <laughs> People laugh, but not Manny. Tomorrow morning, we got to dig a new ditch, fill in the old ditch, and move that Daglo sucker to its new home. I need a crew of six. People shout out their names to indicate they're in, and then quiet returns. Manny's determined. I ain't had much education, but I can count past four. Four don't do it. Need some more. A couple of others volunteer. Manana, after breakfast. He hands Buddha to this new girl who asks, what's that big gigantic lake at the bottom of the hill? It's the Ashokan Reservoir, someone says. 50 years ago, New York City bought the land, forced the people out, and drowned their towns to make it. 
Ever wonder where Manhattan gets its water? Wonder no more. Taking the Buddha, Susan, the head gardener, says, we got to weed the vegetable garden. Weeds are just plants you don't like, some chick calls out. If you know how to make spaghetti sauce from dandelions, tell us, because we make it from tomatoes, our tomatoes, Susan goes. Rising Laney says, weeds are cool. They can grow everywhere else, just not in our vegetable patch. People shout out their names. Susan sits down satisfied. As dark descends, Clark rises. We've been through a lot, but we've kept our spirits strong. There a problem, Dennis asks. Ava gets up. Clark's always so dramatic. It's nothing bad. This morning, Wavy Gravy, the leader of the hog farm commune, called us. They're with the merry pranksters at the Woodstock Festival site, and they need our help. A murmur of recognition ripples through the group. Someone calls out, Ken Kesey with them? Wavy didn't say, responds Clark. Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters are our high priests of hijinks. The Pranksters established their rep as a street theater group mocking America's pro-war, anti-love culture. Kesey became famous with his book, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. With the Pranksters and Kesey connected in, in San Francisco, it was a trip, followed by another trip, and another, until they got this far out idea to paint the school bus in psychedelic colors and take it on an actual trip, a west to east cross country pilgrimage. Their mission was to urge America's youth to embrace lives filled with spontaneity and cooperation and reject lives of conformity and alienation. For them, LSD hit the spot. With music festivals and alternate lifestyles popping up all over the place, the seeds they planted seems to have taken root. They're in Woodstock, Tove asks. Not Woodstock, Woodstock. Woodstock, the music festival, you know? And here Clark uses his fingers for quotation marks. Three days for piece of piece of music. Everyone starts talking at once. Holding the Buddha high, Ava waits for the chatter to subside. It was supposed to be nearby in Saugerties, but the landowner chickened out. Then Wallkill agreed to hold the festival, but the locals went batshit crazy and killed the permit. Clark picks up the thread. And at the very last potential, at the very last possible moment, baby, just as that ship of righteous joy was about to plunge down the abyss. Boom! White Lake said, yes, it's a happening, people. I've been following this, River Stands, raising his voice to be heard. A friend of mine has a ticket outlet in the city, and he told me tickets are flying out the door. A 100,000 people might show up, maybe twice that. Dennis says, they booked the who, the dead, the airplane, Janice, Credence, the band, and get this, Jimmy. Name a band, good chance they'll be there. It's going to be a total blast. Again, the chatter starts up. Ava waits. Wavy Gravy said they're working like crazy, setting up camping areas and food kitchens and the cow pastures. It starts on Friday, only five days away. They need us. River shouts, the biggest, the biggest fucking rock festival ever, ever. A gathering of the tribes, someone adds. Putting his arm around Ava's shoulder, Clark tells it like it is. So if you want to work your ass off all day and boogie all night, be on our school bus at 7 a.m. sharp, because at 7.01, we'll be trucking on down that highway. Thank you.